Hey everyone, it's Mark Wiens with Migrationology.com. It is a drizzly morning in Osaka, and we have just checked out of the Airbnb uh, apartment. We are walking towards the train station, and today Ying and I, oh there's Ying in her raincoat. Uh, today Ying and I are going to Kyoto. So we are moving. Dwight is heading back to Thailand, but before we leave anywhere, we are gonna go have lunch. We are just walking around the neighborhood outside of the train station, and I think we're gonna stop at this restaurant. Uh, it's kind of a diner style restaurant for a quick lunch before we leave to Kyoto. Uh, this is one of the vending machine style restaurants, but it, they conveniently have an entire English menu so you can, with numbers as well, so you can just choose what you want and then you put your money into the vending machine and you get a ticket to get your order. My platter of food has just arrived and just simple but really good looking food. Uh, got rice, of course. There's some miso soup, a piece of tofu, that looks like some slices of Japanese omelet, and then a salad of what looks like shredded chicken. And then for my main dish, I got the grilled piece of salted mackerel. And that is served with some shredded uh, minced up daikon. Before I take that, I'm just gonna squeeze on that lemon. So onto my rice, take a bit of that, that radish, go with it. Oh. oh, that fish is really oily and has a nice grill flavor to it. And then with that daikon, that gives it kind of a juicy, an extra fresh juiciness. Okay, I'm gonna try whatever this one is. Mm. Oh, that's like shredded chicken with kind of a sesame, lemon juice dressing. The only thing this fish could use is just a, a touch of soy sauce. That radish as well. Break off some of this flaky fish. Get some of that radish going. Put that onto my rice. With that touch of soy sauce, it makes it even better. Miso soup. Just finished with that quick lunch. Food was good and I loved my set. I always, that's my go-to um, item is the grilled mackerel. I uh, love it. Uh, but these types of restaurants are all over Japan, kind of the diner style. You use the vending machine to get your coupon, you order your food, and it comes with a whole set. At this type of restaurant, you'll see people from all walks of life eating in there from business people to workers to doctors, anyone. Anyone you see just walking down the street they um, and looking for a budget and tasty and filling meal, we'll just stop in here. Uh, yeah, good food. We just left Dwight who is gonna catch his bus to the airport and Ying and I are off to Osaka Station to catch our train to Kyoto. We're just running around Osaka Station trying to figure out our fare and our train line. But I believe we're taking JR Kyoto line. So for Ying and I, for two of us, that's gonna be 1,120 yen. Yeah. This is the special rapid service to Kyoto. We made it on our train to Kyoto, and if I read correctly, this should take about 30 minutes to get there. That was a really quick ride, I think right at 30 minutes. This Kyoto station is pretty impressive. We found a locker room and we are gonna stick our bag into a locker. They have a bunch of lockers. They're pretty expensive, but I think it's gonna be worth it to put our bag in here so that we can go do some stuff. We just went to the tourist center at the Kyoto, Kyoto station and we got a couple maps of Kyoto as well as some information. And I also kinda figured out that our the hotel I booked 
is a little ways away, so it's not, not a great location, it seems. Uh, so we decided to go to a locker, and we put our main bag, our big bag, into the locker. And now we are going to try to go around and do some things in Kyoto. Uh, the locker situation was a little complicated, but we finally figured it out. And it's a little bit on the pricey side for 700 yen, but I think it's, it'll be worth it so we don't have to carry that bag around as we go sightseeing. Oh, and it's raining outside again. Okay, we have entered the bus station and we're gonna get city bus passes. That was easy, it was 500 yen and we have city bus pass one day. We are heading to Ginka Kuji Temple. We just got off the bus at Ginka Kuji Mei Station. That took a little longer than I expected. I think that took about 30 minutes and we're now walking towards the temple, but this is a beautiful area. The air is really fresh. It's kind of almost to the base of the mountain. It is still drizzling a little bit, but we are walking up the hill to the temple and passing through quite a few souvenir shops as well as some restaurants and snack stores. And it costs 500 yen for entrance per adult. Arigato. This temple was built or established in 1482 and although it is pretty busy and there are a lot of umbrellas going on and a lot of a lot of tourists here today it still retains its kind of peaceful and very uh, relaxing and very like harmonized with nature feel to it. I think that's what I really like about it is the garden. The gardens here are just incredibly beautiful, uh, well manicured, everything is in the right place. The trees, the moss, the the little streams, uh, yeah just the, the gardens are what really makes it special. We just made it to the top of the hill and now we have a view of the temple from above. And you can see down there in the middle is the courtyard with the sand, uh, the extremely elaborate and minimal sand design. We just got out of the gates of the temple and I think I already mentioned this a couple of times but the real beauty is in the gardens. That was what really made it nice. We are back at the bus stop now and there is quite a line to get on the bus. The bus has just arrived. Okay, we didn't make it on that first bus, but the second bus has come in just 10 minutes later. And we are taking bus number 100, and we are going to Kiyomisudera Temple next. We just got off the bus at Kiyomisu, and we are going, we are walking up the hill now towards Kiyomisudera Temple. <laughs> This is a really busy area and there are lots of touristy kind of shops, souvenirs and some snacks along the way. I see the steaming Bausa buns over there and I think I have to go in for one to make it up the hill. Okay, thank you. Oh, you paper, very hot. Thank you. Right off the steamer, but I needed some energy to make it up this hill. Oh, and that is really hot. He told me to hold it only by the paper. Yeah, that is piping hot. I feel like I'm breathing steam right now. I was expecting the meat to be a little darker color, but it's kind of light. Um, the bread is very fluffy and hot. And then maybe that's kind of a minced pork, maybe with some cabbage in it. Just paid the entrance fee, and that was 300 yen. And now we are going up to the main hall of the temple. 
and we are kind of looking out over the forest. Uh, this temple is really known for its lookout and for its, especially during, I guess, autumn when the leaves turn orange and yellow. And this is a very well-known kind of landmark in Kyoto and a very popular selfie taking spot. I didn't realize this when we were up at the main sanctuary of the temple, but it appears that you don't, if you don't want to go inside the actual temple, you can just kind of go around it and still get a great view of the temple without actually being within that main sanctuary. So I, yeah, I didn't realize that when we paid the entrance fee, but had I known, I probably would have just walked around to get better views without having to pay that entrance fee. We walked around the neighborhood for a little bit, but now we're gonna go back to the bus station, probably catch the bus back to Kyoto Station, and then go to find our hotel. We're just walking around the basement of Kyoto Station, and they have a lot of restaurants. And I think we've chosen at this restaurant, which is a tempura restaurant. I'm not sure exactly what the restaurant name is, as it's all in Japanese, but they do have an English menu. Oh. And so that comes with a couple of shrimp tempura, as well as that looks like seaweed. There, oh, there's an egg down there. And what else? There's some kind of vegetable. Then on the bottom is rice as well. And I am really hungry after walking around those temples this afternoon. Um, I'm not sure what piece I should go about eating first. Oh, I think there's fish down here as well. But I gotta go for, perhaps I should go for that shrimp first. And I think because they didn't give us a sauce bowl, this is not a sauce tempura, but they've already drizzled some kind of a dark, uh, glazy sauce on it already. I gotta take a bite out of this shrimp and that's, that's pretty good size. <laughs> Oh wow, that's awesome. Oh, it's a little bit oily. But that shrimp inside is just cooked perfectly. It's not overcooked. And then that sauce is just, it tastes almost like, tastes kind of, tastes a little bit like a combination between soy sauce and sesame sauce. But oh man, that, that is a good shrimp. Mm. Oh, even the rice is good. Okay, let me just finish this shrimp and then I'll break into that egg. That is one of the one of the reasons I chose this item because it had a deep fried egg on it. Oh, oh, and look at that. As soon as I pressed down it just like oh, oh the yolk just squirted. Oh. Oh, excellent. The yolk is runny. Oh yeah. I knew it would not be an overcooked egg in Japan. That's for sure. Oh, look at that, guys. Oh, man. With the rice, and then it has a deep fried... Actually, I might have to eat half an egg in one bite just so it doesn't fall apart. Oh, that's just so pure and so good. The yolk is runny and creamy, and then it does have a little crispy skin around it. It's such a comforting style of tempura when they put it on top of the rice and drizzle it in sauce. And I am loving that egg, but I'm gonna I'm gonna grab this piece of eggplant. This is a piece of fried eggplant down here with some of the egg, and then that rice is also just so perfectly cooked. It's so good, so comforting. Dinner was a success. That was really comfort tempura for sure. The only thing I wish is that I could have gotten a free refill on that bowl. Uh, but yeah, really tasted good. We are walking back now to try and find the, our locker if we can, and then we're gonna take the train on to our hotel. Okay, here's our locker, <laughs> number 2658. Oh, 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 our stuff is all there. We got our big bag. Now walking to try and figure out which train to take. Just got off the train at Fushimi Momoyama Station and our guest house should be very close here. It's a little bit far from central Kyoto, which I didn't really realize as I was booking it, but we'll see how it is. 
according to the map, our hotel is just down here. And we got a little bit lost, but I think this is it. Called Maison Fushimi. We entered, we just took our shoes off, and gonna put on some sandals. Japanese tatami room. Japanese room. Okay. Okay, thank you. Oh, okay, I see. Just got checked into our room and it's pretty basic but Japanese style and you can really smell since the since the floor is the bamboo mats you can really smell the aroma of bamboo in here and then the beds are on the ground and then for this room we have a shared bathroom and communal facilities so we'll, we'll be staying here for two nights it's it's a it's a nice place but it, maybe it's a little bit far from Kyoto town, but it does look like there's some interesting things around here and lots of food to eat as well. Tomorrow we're gonna explore Kyoto more. Uh, so I'm gonna end the vlog for today here. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you and see you tomorrow for the next vlog.